Let me just invite Roshan Fitzpatrick, our artist of light, uh, to speak to you for a few minutes while she gets ready. Please welcome. Um, she's obviously the creator of these wonderful works, and I'll let her tell you about them. No, actually, I have a mic. Oh, good. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would very much like to thank uh, Shubro and also to thank Raj, I don't see him here, and also Michael for creating this opportunity for me, be, me to be able to share the art. Uh, I'll tell you, first of all, very briefly a little bit about my background and then the source of inspiration for this art. I'm uh, an Irish person, as you can tell from my accent, and I'm a graduate of Trinity College Dublin and the University of Geneva, and I used to work for the United Nations European Commission and the European Bank. And a few years ago, I was lucky enough to have a wonderful near-death experience, and I know it sounds strange to say it's lucky to have a wonderful near-death experience, but it's actually the truth. Um, the Dalai Lama has a wonderful quote where he says, when you know how to die, you know how to live, and it really is so true because having had a near-death experience, I have absolutely no fear whatsoever of dying, and it has given me an incredible freedom to actually live life and to live in the light and to be able to share the beauty of the light, and that's what this art is behind you, and that's what I share as, as, as artist of the light. So um, just to tell you very briefly, what happened a few years ago was I suddenly found myself in a situation at home where I was alone and I had a blinding, excruciating headache. And my head was wrenched backwards and I had hot, cold sweats and nausea and vomiting and um, I knew that I had to remain conscious. I knew that I was actually having a brain hemorrhage. And I knew that I had to keep my blood pressure extremely low because the more blood that leaked into my brain, I had a greater chance of dying and a much greater chance of having a stroke. So I chose to remain extremely calm. I called an ambulance, made my way down the stairs, opened the front door so that they wouldn't have to break it down, and literally meditated while I was waiting for the ambulance to come. When I then went into hospital and then went into the ICU unit, I was told that I, it was actually already surprising that I'd already survived that long and that I did have a very high risk of having a stroke. So what I decided was, rather than going into fear, I decided to stay in the moment and to connect. And what happened then was really, truly amazing. I found that I came out of my body and I connected with pulsating, vibrating waves of blissful, blissful infinity. I connected with the oneness that we all are taught about and we all are told about in, you know, this sense of nothing that we learn about in Buddhism. But it kind of sounds very boring, you know, the sense of nothing. It's, it's not very inspiring to connect with. For me, it actually was, because what it was was no thing. I was brought to the place where everything was pure energy, where it was pulsating, vibrating, serenity, harmony, bliss. And uh, I realized the, the vibrant and the alive potential. You know, literally, the no thing is because it's before it has formed matter. So we often are taught about how our thoughts create our reality. That's absolutely the truth. We're all pure, pure energy, vibrant, alive energy. And it's like describing you know, what is water to a fish, because we're literally in it and we're in it all the time. So I was blessed to have been shown this. And then I made the choice to actually come back into my body again. At the time, I remember thinking, this is so infinite, you know, it's just so incredibly awesome. How is all of this energy going to fit into that tiny little body? And uh, I made the choice to come back because my parents were alive at the time. And um, I chose to come back in and to make a full recovery. And uh, I was very fortunate because that's what happened. And the universe, of course, provides it in its own humorous way in the sense that I was in an ICU unit and there was this wonderful gentleman called Paddy Blessum, who was an elderly gentleman, and his extensive vocabulary consisted of two words, the first word being a four-letter word beginning with F, followed by off. <laughs> so I was in this ecstatic bliss, and then bam, <laughs> back in my body <laughs> with Paddy. And um, so I literally experienced the ecstasy and then the grounding reality. <laughs> So what I chose to do then was literally bring all of this energy in and it took about a year because what happens when you have an experience like that is that your body is just totally fried. It's like a light bulb that's maybe 
five, you know, 5,000, like 50 watts, and 5,000 watts go through, I was totally fried. I couldn't speak. Um, eyes, you know, I had to wear sunglasses all the time. In the hospital, they call me Gina Lala Brigida, because I was there at my sunglasses. Uh, like a pin would drop, and it should be like a pneumatic drill. It was just so, so sensitive to everything. And it took about a year, and I fully integrated all of that energy, and I'm incredibly, um, incredibly blessed in that I live in all of this energy now. And that's what I share through this art, and that's why I share it as artist of the light. So the intention behind all of this art is to help everybody to tap into their own inner light, to tap into their own joy. And we, we all have the choice every moment of every day to come from a higher consciousness. And uh, you can tap into that through the yoga or through meditation. And another way is actually through this art. So how I create the pieces is I use Swarovski crystal and I hand sew all of the crystals onto the silk. Uh, the designs are inspired by meditation, by nature. This one here is the Whirlpool Galaxy, but it also is a, it's a cross-section of our DNA. So what it's showing is how the macro is the same as the micro. This one here is the meteor shower, and it shows the power of intention. So for example, with this conference, the intention has been love and care. And when you come from that place, how that manifests out in the world. And the one behind me here, is the new dawn piece and it's how every moment of every day we can make the choice to come from a higher place within and then when we come from that place and when you go into your organizations and you share that from that place that then ripples out and um, so just i suppose really to to finalize i mean i'm so incredibly grateful to be here and thank you very very much for the opportunity and to even to have brought this to america it has been beyond my wildest dreams in the last couple of years, I've had six shows in Manhattan, two in D.C., and it's currently at the Irish American Heritage Museum. The art's been endorsed by Deepak Chopra. It's in Richard Branson's spa resort. Uh, Mark Burnett, producer of the Emmys and The Voice, and his wife, Roma Downey, they've endorsed the work, and they have the work. Wall Street Journal, Forbes, Washington Post. I mean, I have to pinch myself, and it's, it's not me. It's through me, uh, because my intention is very, very clear. It's to come from the light and share the light. And um, I'm so grateful. And uh, thank you so much for this opportunity. Just, just very, very briefly, I, when I finished um, my exhibition in DC, I went to the Martin Luther King Memorial. And I don't know if any of you have had the chance to go there, but it is so, yeah, I see a few heads nodding. It's a wonderful, wonderful memorial. But one of the quotations is, make, make a career of humanity. And that's what every single person in this room is doing. And I feel very, very privileged and very honored to be able to share the art with everyone. And thank you so much for listening. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, somebody, I heard somebody saying, do I have a website? Yeah. Certainly. If you Google artist and light, yeah, artistofthelight.com, and you'll find me. And a huge thank you to Michael. And a huge thank you to my dear friend, Dr. Christine Rank. Both of you have made everything possible. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you.